one of the, uh, I would say, core facets of the argument for the real racists, like Fringe, Libertarian, Realist, and so forth, is this uh, correlate between head size and IQ. No. I think what the skeptical heretic is referring to here is a part of a video, Make the World Flat, where I talked about a study that showed within some sample a correlation between cranial capacity and IQ of about 0.4 when gender is controlled for. Um, and just to note, this is higher than, than a correlation done by study in terms of uh, total muscle mass in the arm and isometric strength. Let's go back to the Inuits. The biggest brains, but not the highest IQs. Now, this will be the fourth time I put up this chart in a video. Okay? If the skeptical heretic is getting my positions from my videos, there is no excuse for him to not know about this. Now, let me read this passage uh, for the fourth time on YouTube from Richard Lynn. Quote, the Inuit have an unusually strong visual memory ability that is not measured in standard intelligence tests. This was shown by Kleinfield in 1971 in a study of the visual memory of 125 Inuit village children in Alaska, aged 9 to 16, compared with 501 white children in Anchorage and Fairbanks, the two principal towns in Alaska. The test consisted of the presentation of drawings for a brief period of time, after which the children were given a task of drawing them from memory. The Inuit children obtained a mean IQ of 106 when in relation to the white mean of 100. Kleinfield observes that this test result is consistent with the observations of travelers who have accompanied Inuit on long hunting expeditions. She writes that, quote, Caucasians who have traveled with Inuit frequently remark on their extraordinary ability to travel through what seems to be a featureless terrain by closely observing the smallest landmarks and memorizing their spatial locations. I've been over this many times. Now, clearly, populations aren't going to evolve larger brains for no reason. And the debate at heart is about evolution, okay? Now, and brains consume calories and they consume oxygen. Now, your brain can kind of shut down a little bit in a fight or flight situation and consume less oxygen, but only to a certain extent, right? Larger brains are going to consume more, and so they're going to have to have some function in order to offset this cost in calories and oxygen. That function may or, not, may, or may not be captured by IQ tests and may or may not result in economic success within a given country for whatever population we're talking about. Now, not only are there gross morphology differences in total size, but from the only study I can find on this, self-identified blacks and whites in this sample with all of the, the qualifications and what the samples are, they appear to have differences in brain composition. And of course, this is both age and sex controlled. Um, for example, white matter, the orbital frontal cortex, and there are some other things uh, as well. And this is what you would expect. I mean, it would be quite a coincidence that all of these identifiable races, despite having on average different sized brains, would have precisely identical scale of everything. The idea that these identifiable races have, on average, identical innate cognitive capacity is a joke of a position. And because of this, it is unwise to ascribe any economic gap between these identifiable races to environment or culture by default, because we know that they're not going to be the same in terms of innate cognitive capacities. They're not going to be the same. So pointy, a difference is not, a, is, is not prima facie evidence of something nefarious going on. Now, IQ, what is IQ? Well, IQ is a better predictor of income than education level. Right? And when you control for IQ, in 1994 at least, when the bell curve was written, uh, race differences in income between blacks, whites, and Hispanics went away. As for the libertarian realist, I've never heard the libertarian realist use the cranial capacity to IQ correlation as something central to what he talks about. Maybe it is some real central point for him, but I watch his videos basically as he makes them, and I've been doing this since he made the, the series um, The Demographic Decline of the Czech Republic. And all I can say is that I have not heard him make uh, the brain size to IQ correlations out to be some central point. Right. That's all I can say. And and I don't do it. OK, so that's that. This is the chart that you would receive from a race realist. OK, well, here's a chart you would get from me. Also, I don't call myself a race realist. And it may be interesting to break down studies by nationalities and look at multiple studies within a self-identified ethnic group to get an idea for the error range of, of each of these data points. And in race differences in intelligence, Richard Lynn did precisely that. Uh, he, didn't give, he didn't go into as much detail as they would have liked, but he went into more than he had to. 
Right. Well, as I've already established, the head size to IQ correlation is not some something central to my case anyway. Uh, but this is wrong. Uh, here's a, a meta-analysis done by Michael McDaniel for the Journal of Intelligence. Ooh, Sophia Rune doesn't like that, but not for reasons you might expect. McDaniel found a correlation of 0.33 across all the studies in, a, in his analysis, and it's a hash. I mean, there, there's, there's studies with really high correlations and really low correlation, um, but they tend to be positive, like almost all of them, and the general trend is that they're positive. And the correlation is 0.33 across all studies in his analysis, but this goes up to about 0.4 when you control for gender. Okay. And the strength of the correlation depends on the population. If you, for example, had a sample, we could say, that only had Europeans and Inuits, and Europeans have a, typically have a much higher IQ than Inuits, then the correlation between brain size and IQ would be might be zero or might even be negative, right? Who knows if, if the within group correlations of brain size and IQ can override the, the, the between group uh, anti-correlations between brain size and IQ in that case. Um, but if you had a sample with only Europeans, then the correlation would almost certainly be positive, uh, more certainly would be positive the larger the, your, your sample gets. So depending on what populations are being studied, in general, bigger brains correlate with whatever it is that IQ is measuring. Now why don't we take a look at what a proper head size and IQ chart looks like with proper resolution on the various subgroups. Now as we can see, not only is it broken out by both the size of cranial capacity and IQ, but also by self-identified ethnic group. And if we look at these numbers, we can see that there is no direct correlation between head size and IQ. If anything, it might show that there's a greater indicator of head size and latitude, yet when we look at Native Americans, we can see that even that doesn't necessarily hold true. Okay, not sure why you would say this. Uh, we can compare the cranial capacities of Native Americans from more northerly latitudes like Inuit, to those from Central America, and yep, colder climates, bigger brains. So I don't, I don't know what that's related to or why you brought it up, but it's wrong. Part of the reason why this is just a complete train wreck, in my opinion, is the fact that the data doesn't fit the assertion. And it's very simple to look at this as, if anything, a problem of statistics. The majority of people who are I would say, informed about statistics, understand that statistics are very good at lying based on how they are presented. If someone is to present you with raw data, you can effectively pick and drop almost anything you want to to give yourself a line of best fit. Or you can play with the line of best fit in order to get some sort of uh, evidentiary stance on a uh, non-hypothesis like this. It's simply a matter of the resolution at which you are viewing the data. So if we look at the data from the race realist perspective, we get one set of figures. But if we look at the data on a more individualistic basis, something that is decidedly non-egalitarian. Oh, so that chart that the skeptical heretic was uh, flashing over in his video, that broke these studies down to the individual level? Not from what I saw. Now, I have no clue what he meant by individualism here being in contradiction to egalitarianism in this context. If we're talking about, for, say for example, let's say we were talking about equality under the law. Right? That's equality. Egalitarianism means advocacy of equality, and it's inherently contextual. So if we're talking about legal egalitarianism, then some would say that that form of egalitarianism actually enhances individual flourishing or, or, or individual being able to separate themselves from others that it enhances individualism in practice okay so egalitarianism is not inherently contradictory to individualism across all topics now what egalitarianism has to do with individualism in regards to group difference in a, a debate about group differences and cognitive function I have no clue I don't know what an individualist stance in the race debate would could even be. And I don't even know if, if that's what the skeptical heretic was talking about 
or if he just somehow thinks that individualism and egalitarianism are at odds or, 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 or part of some dichotomy. I don't know. We can see that there is a wide variance amongst multiple self-identified subgroups that, if anything, more closely correlates to society, socioeconomic status, and learned behavior. Yeah, yeah. who knows what he's talking about here? He's, nah, he doesn't say what it is. It's kind of an assertion of the central dogma. If anything, this is simply more evidence for the environmental theory and social theories of intelligence, and it pisses on the hereditarian view just a little bit. What is? This is? This, this, this scanning across a, a few numbers here? So did, did you find some African populations with a higher IQ than, than Europeans? Did you find like some African tribe up in the hills in Ethiopia which had a higher IQ than the average Euro European? And if so, if you did find these people, did you show that this was a result of culture and not of the peculiar genetics of this tribe? And if you did all of this, how does this go to show that the races all have precisely the same in innate cognitive function? Egalitarianism means equal, or means advocacy of equality in a certain context. An egalitarian view on race, in practice, it basically means the, the races are equal in cognitive function. It means that East Asians, in addition to having no worthwhile athletic abilities and tiny penises, are also no smarter than Africans, at least not inherently. We can look at different identifiable races and we can see differences in gross brain morphology. The egalitarian position is that cognitive function is precisely identical in spite of these manifest morphology differences. This is not just about IQ. Okay? IQ is one theater of debate. This is about all brain function, including what is measured by IQ and what is not. Now, if you don't hold this position, if you think that there have to be at least some differences, then you are a racial hereditarian and you are technically in my camp. The argument then just becomes a matter of degree. How much of a racial hereditarian are you? How much do you agree with fringe elements and libertarian realist? Because unless you believe in the tooth fairy of racial equality, it's going to be a non-zero amount. And once the big simple of evolution applying to humans in the brain, once that's established, then we can get back to arguing about how much of the variation is attributable to environment. But the point is that at this point, it's just racial hereditarian infighting. The disagreement is no longer categorical. How much of, the dis of, of these differences is a result of genetics? How much is due to environment? And that can get fuzzy due to environment switching on and off genes and people creating different environments for themselves based on their genetic makeup. So there's, there's gene-environment interaction and it goes both ways. Now, what will often happen is that a person will have a sudden revelation that the egalitarian position is hilariously, spectacularly vapid and that they only held it because it was one of these implied assumptions in all of this course since as far as they can remember. And once they realize this, the dread will overtake them. Then this, hereditar this racial hereditarian in denial will lie about me, for example, or it doesn't have to be me, me. It, it's, it, it's whoever is the foil, whoever is the foil in their fantasy of racism, they'll ascribe all sorts of positions to this person. Positions that they don't hold. Like, for example, saying that I want to ban all mixed marriages, right? Sophia Rune, Hannibal Barca, and Evo Jen, Skeptical Heretic, have all accused me of this, and this accusation comes from nowhere. I mean, what's clearly happening is that they're all saying it, they hear each other saying it, and then, and so you guys think it's true. Anyway, what they will then do is they'll try to push me further into the, into the racist camp, than I actually am, and by pushing me to be some monster, that allows them to set themselves in opposition to these new positions that they have assigned to me, this new box that they have put me in, and they can lie to themselves and say that that's what it was all about all along, and that they never were a racial egalitarian. Right? It saves them from having to admit that they that they believed in the tooth fairy. Oh. I never believed in Santa Claus. I'm just arguing against your position that Christmas presents don't exist. And this doesn't mean that I'm right about everything. I make tons of mistakes, right? I'm, I'm talking about big simple. But as for the skeptical heretic, his hammer falling on me 
has consisted of pointing out one error of mine involving Alan, Alan Sokol publishing in a peer-reviewed journal when, it, when the journal he published in was not, in fact, peer-reviewed, and then saying that I outright opposed peer review when I never said that. And then in this video where he completely gets my position wrong inexcusable way, um, yeah, oh man, the hammer is really falling. The hammer is really falling on me here. You know, call me a racist a few more times, then you'll really pwn me.